Cool inside, so cool inside. Don't you want to go? Where is cool inside? Dum 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 dum. Greetings, my sisters. Hope you're just having a wonderful day today. And I want you to get super excited because this week we are going to be blessed by attending the 2022 Windy City Lectures. Aren't you ready to learn something new? And this year we are blessed to have an addition to the lectures because we have added a ladies component. And can I tell you that the women that we have down to speak for us this week are a grand group of sisters with a lot of wisdom and a lot of spiritual wisdom and practical wisdom. <clears throat> And they are going to encourage us, make us laugh, make us stop and think, and just help us to grow. The theme for the 2022 lectureship is On the Other Side of Jordan, Taking a Stand and Capturing New Land in a Post-Pandemic Present. And if COVID-19 hasn't taught us anything, it's that change sometimes has to take place. And the things that we're used to doing, we're not going to be doing anymore. Or if we do, we might just have to do them a little bit differently. And that's okay. So get your Bibles, get your journals, and let's have a great time of learning. Welcome to the 2022 Windy City Lectures. And pleasing to your eyes Built by none other than our God on high Yeah, the sky are beautiful and they're clear as can be. There is no better place to be young. Hey, do you know a lady that when she walks in the room, people notice? <laughs> Our next speaker is definitely one of those kinds of sisters. And of course, I speak of none other than our beloved sister, Gladys Turner, from the Jackson Boulevard, Monroe Street congregation in Chicago. Sister Gladys has a, a great personality and she is definitely a woman of wisdom. She stands with poise and confidence and she trusts God and, and believes in God and walks with God on a daily basis. And today, she is going to encourage us on the topic, Sisters in the Local Congregation, Taking a Stand and Facing the Future with Confidence. Let's give a round of applause for our sister, Gladys Turner, as we sit at her feet. Blowing, yeah. Sun is always shining. Ain't gonna be. I am Gladys Turner from the Jackson Boulevard, Monroe Street Church of Christ in Chicago, Illinois. Thank you, Dr. David Penn, for allowing me this opportunity to be a part of the Windy City Lectureship. 2022. I have been given the topic, 
sisters in the local congregation, taking a stand and facing the future with confidence. First Peter 5 and 7 says, the Bible says, casting all your cares upon him, for he cared for you. The scripture tells us that God cares and it informs us what we should do because he cares. When we have problems, trials, and everything seems to be falling apart, the Bible says that we should not let the problems beat us down. We should give them all to God. We are not to focus our energy on our problems. It will take our minds off of Jesus. When my husband, the love of my heartbeat, was in the hospital very sick, I was afraid. My spirit was troubled. But I had to remind myself that we were not alone. Jesus was there. When a storm comes, Jesus speaks to the storm in our life. A great calm will come over our life. That great calm will settle us, help us to deal with life more effectively. This happens only after we have gone through the storm. Giving God all the praise, we made it through the storm. Sisters in the local congregation taking a stand and facing the future with confidence, we serve a sovereign God who never, who's never surprised by circumstances, Psalms 34 and 19. Because of that assurance, we can take a stand and face the future with confidence. Sometimes it seems as though we can't take a stand and face the future with confidence because we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not, dis not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. 2 Corinthians 4, 8 and 9. We can face the future with confidence because God is standing there with us, sometimes holding us, sometimes carrying us. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. God is able to redeem and restore everything for our good and his glory. All things may not be good, but God can and will use all things for good. Romans 8 and 28. When we are having bad times, where are we going to put our trust, our confidence, when our faith is being tried, when we don't know how we are going to make it and everything is in chaos? Our situations confirm how much we are willing to rely on God. It is all going to work out if we put our confidence in God. God has a future for us. Don't be afraid to commit your life to him. Never be afraid to commit an unknown future to a known God. We may not know what tomorrow holds, but we do know who holds tomorrow. It's our Father who has a perfect plan for our life. Sisters in the local congregation taking a stand and facing the future with confidence. Confidence that God will give us hope in the midst of our suffering and trials. Even though we will face difficulties in this life, God's promises are true. He is faithful and will bring us through. Life will get incredibly, incredibly difficult at times. It is God who's in control. And while the difficult season might not end tomorrow, God is still there and he will bring his people through. 
we have an assurance that whatever we may have to face today, God's thoughts toward us are only good continually. For I know the plans that I have for you, declared the Lord. They are plans for peace and not disaster. Plans to give you a future filled with hope. Jeremiah 29, 11. So, while we are struggling, sisters in the local congregation, to take a stand and face the future with confidence, it is not about pretending that everything is okay when it is not. It is about trusting God enough to live a life of belief and confidence to God even when it's difficult. I leave you with this. Be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Philippians 4, 6-8. And this peace of God, it passes all understanding. With this peace, people cannot understand how you are going through the problems that you are going through and still have peace. They cannot understand how you have situations like you are dealing with and still have peace. That's because we have the peace that passes all understanding. I see you sisters. Take it a stand because you have the peace that passes all understanding. Facing the future with confidence because you have the peace that passes all understanding. Sisters in the local congregation, take it a stand and facing the future with confidence. Come from standing in God's strength and resting in his power and his peace. In Philippians 4 and 11, the Apostle Paul says, Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. We must learn to be content and rely on God. Blessings, my sisters. I once was lost, but now I'm found, found, found. Oh, yeah. Listen, I was lost so deep in sin. Very deeply stained within. But the master of the sea.
and rescued me. No, you don't know. He rescued me. Say you don't know. He rescued me. He saved me from that shark like used to be. He rescued me. Hey, amazing grace. How sweet the sound. I once was lost. I once was lost. I once was lost. But now I'm found. Oh yeah, he's so amazing. Yeah. Oh, you, you, Lord, you saved my life. Brian C. Jones, Senior Minister of the Newburgh Church of Christ here in beautiful Louisville, Kentucky. First of all, I want to thank uh, Dr. David Penn for the opportunity, as well as the Chicago area Churches of Christ for allowing me to be a part. I think this is my second time in the Windy City Lectureships. I'm just really excited about this opportunity to share with all of the listeners and the viewers even on today. Uh, be turning your Bibles to Joshua chapter number one. Uh, I'm going to read verses one through five, and then we'll lift the subject. Joshua chapter one, verses one through five. There you find these words. Now it came about after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' servant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, cross this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving to them, the sons of Israel. Every place on which the sole of your foot treads, I have given it to you. Just as I spoke to Moses from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and as far as the great sea toward the setting of the sun will be your territory. No man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life, just as I have been with Moses, I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. Let me give you a bonus verse, verse six. Be strong and courageous for you shall give this people possession of the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Pray for me as I live for a subject in this lectureship on Joshua 911 9 child of god beloved we for the last several years have been in a painful pitiful perilous pandemic that has swept through this world claiming 6.29 million people throughout the world and over a million people have died here in the U.S. We are seeing right now senseless wars in Ukraine. We are also seeing devastation, an amalgamation of devastation, aggravation, agitation, but yet even creation, even today. I want you to know that we're seeing brown and black 
men shot and killed and even killing each other. I decided a couple years ago to turn this pandemic into a plandemic because I saw the need to help people understand that we are living in the days of an emergency. There's an emergency with families. There's an emergency with relationships. There's an emergency in the Lord's church because brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, we have indeed forgotten our first love. And as a result of us not spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ as we should and seeking to be evangelistic congregations, being concerned about the souls of humanity that have died and laid their heads on dying pillows and caskets keep rolling in and out of churches and funeral homes and we sit back and we do nothing. So now is an emergency. Someone has to spiritually dial 911 and God and Jesus Christ and Holy Spirit is the dispatch and he's going to tell us what to do because if we sit back and do what we're doing now nothing will change if we want to have an impact in this country in your city whoever you are wherever you are going forward from this sermonic presentation tonight we're going to have to learn that we're going to have to change two things our mentality and our methodology can i say it one more time Brothers and sisters, we're going to have to change our mentality and our methodology because God is indeed a God of movement. And since God is a God of movement, God never stops trying to accomplish his goal and accomplish his purpose. And he uses people like you and me to do it. We find as we jump into Joshua's text that there has been a transition that has taken place. We see that there is the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord. And since there is a death, there has been a transition in leadership from Moses. And now we transition over to Joshua because the Bible says that God told Joshua, the son of Nun, that Moses is dead. And child of God, can I tell you some of our fellowship leaders in our brotherhood, they're dead. And I want to speak right now to some Joshua's that are watching online right now. This is the time we are in a state of emergency. We have three to four congregations of churches of Christ closing their doors every month. They're shutting down their doors, selling their buildings, closing their doors and downsizing to smaller buildings because we no longer are concerned about growing churches by saving the souls of mankind and being careful to know that if we don't step up and say something, they may die apart from the Lord and go to hell. And nobody wants to talk about salvation anymore. Nobody wants to talk about how good the gospel is. We want to do everything else but evangelism. And now we're just focused on events, but events don't help people get into heaven. Evangelism helps people get to heaven. Do I have a witness online? Just say I'm with you, Brother Jones. Type that in right now. Amen, somebody. So I want you to know that when you look at this text, the transition has taken place. And there needs to be a transition uh, even today in churches of Christ because People like Brother Lawton are gone. Brother Wells are gone. Brother Evans, they are gone. And can I tell you that we are positioned for a season and a time like this as gospel preachers. And what the God of heaven, the sovereign God almighty wants to do is to remove the spiritual cataract. That is blinding the eyes of Christians throughout the world to help us understand that we need to preach what's going to help people live. But in addition to preaching, what's going to help people live the king's way is to tell them the truth that's in the word of God so they can be freed from the bondage of sin and be immersed in grace and mercy so that we can live the quality of life that God intended for us to live through the person, the man of God, Jesus Christ Almighty. So we find the transition taking place. But I want you to know that when God promised 
that his people would indeed have a land uh, that's filled with milk and honey. God wanted to use Joshua to get his people into the promised land because God wants to take you to a better place. I got to get you out of a bitter place and let you know that God wants to take you to a better place. And he used Joshua to lead the people of God into the promised land that there was a problem. The people of God spied out the land. And when they spied out the land, the Bible says for 40 days, they came back with a good report. The report was the land is fruitful. It is a land of milk and honey. But they had a problem. Somebody online just type in the word problem, problem. Ever deal with some problems and you know that God has told you that he has something for you, that God wants to give you a better quality of life. God wants to send you somewhere else so that you can enjoy the fruits of what God is getting ready to do as a humble servant of almighty God. But there was a problem because 10 of the spies came back and said, the land is good. We've tasted some of the, the grapes and the fruit, but the problem is that there's some giants over there and the cities uh, are fortified and, and the giants are over there. So the land is good, but the people are big and we are like grasshoppers, Numbers 13, compared to those enemies of God's people. So they said, Moses and Aaron and the congregation, we won't be able to go because we are weak and fearful in their sight. And Joshua gave a different report. Joshua said, we could do it. Joshua said, let's go. Joshua said, get out your track shoes like Usain Bolt and let's go over there and take what God has already said is ours. If God says it's yours, there's no devil in hell that can defeat you. You're going to be victorious if God says that the land is yours and everything over there is yours. But if you have some people that do not believe in God and not only that, they do not believe in themselves because they said we couldn't do it. But it was never about we couldn't do it. It was about the fact that God could do it. I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but maybe you're in a situation right now and the devil is trying to get you to doubt yourself because you're dealing with a dirty, diabolical, demonic devil that's trying to disturb you with doubt. That's a lot of D words just to tell you one thing. There's no devil in hell that can stop the word of God because whatever God says in his mouth is going to happen. I believe it's time for a five second praise. Break for anybody online that knows that God has kept his word and God has came through for you and can't nobody do you like the Lord because every time God's word comes out it'll never come back forward but they were scared so Joshua said let's go Caleb says we can take them but the problem was it's not that they just did not believe in God they didn't believe in themselves they considered the enemies of God giants and considered themselves grasshoppers and there are too many Christian oh you know I'm getting ready to go there right there are too many Christian grasshoppers that see yourself as small that see yourself smaller than the enemies of God and see yourself smaller in the world but I need somebody to know that we need some Christian giants out there any giant killers online any giant killers online that know if God said that the land is yours if God says you're going to defeat your enemies can nothing stop you from getting the victory because God said that the land is yours. And how many of you tonight know that God is indeed a strategist? Oh God. I want you to know that God, beloved, is a strategist. And if we are created in the image of God, and we are indeed God's offspring, which means that we need to have a strategy. Because if you don't have a strategy individually as a kingdom citizen or as a congregation. You need to know that the devil is always going to win because he is smart enough 
to have a strategy to stop us and we're dumb enough not to have a strategy to win. So I'm telling you that a strategy is a plan, a pattern, a policy, a process or procedure that is used to achieve a goal. And if you have no strategy for implementing in your congregation to see how you are going to attack your city to win those souls that are being lost to the devil even today, then you're going to lose. So many more of our congregations will be shutting their doors and downsizing their buildings or selling their buildings because they don't want to evangelize. And Rob Whitaker said, if the church doesn't evangelize, the church will fossilize. And you need to know you need a strategy. Well, how do you know that, Brother Jones? Because God gave the man Joseph a strategy. You remember when the Bible says that when Joseph went down to Egypt and there was a famine and the Pharaoh had a dream and seven fat cows and seven skinny cows and the only person that can interpret the dream was Joseph. And there's a powerful principle in that passage that's pregnant that I want to share with you right now. Sometimes when God gets ready to promote you, sometimes when God gets ready to elevate you, he'll give your enemies a problem that only you could fix. I ain't got nobody in this building. It's just me and the Holy Spirit and my cameraman. But we shout on the inside in this place. Because sometimes God just sends you to a season of your life. Not to punish you, but to prepare you. Not only to prepare you, but to position you. Because Joseph had a, a smart plan that in the seven years of plenty, we're going to save. And when the seven years of famine come, we won't have to worry about it because we've saved so much. So Joseph provided a powerful a financial scheme to help out Egypt. So he was promoted to second in command. What are you doing, God? Ultimately, I gave Joseph a strategy because I had a plan for Joseph. Now, Joseph thought that the strategy was just for him to help out Egypt and help out Pharaoh. But what God was ultimately trying to do is save Joseph's family because there was somebody in Joseph's family that was carrying the seed that was going to lead through the lineage of Jesus Christ. There was another occasion right here in the book of Joshua in Joshua a chapter 6 where we find that God is indeed a strategist. God told them before they got ready to take over Jericho after they had crossed over to the Jordan. Joshua chapter 6 don't have time, but I want you to read it in its totality because here's what it says. God told the people, he said, I want the men of war to march around the city once a day for six days. Notice the strategy. And then I want the men of war and I want the seven priests and I want seven priests to be following the Ark of the Covenant and the seven priests are going to have trumpets of rams, horns, and on the seventh day after they march around the city seven times and the seven priests with the trumpets of rams' horn are going to blow those horns and all they had to do was shout and when they shouted, the walls were going to come down flat and they will be able to rush in to defeat their enemies and take over their land. What are you doing, God? I'm showing you that I'm a God that's a strategist and I got a plan. I got a pattern. I got a process. I got a policy and I got a procedure and it's found in my word. And if you just follow my strategy and go out and implement it, he will make sure that you understand that he will yield some fruit in your ministry, some fruit in your life. You'll start having some better days and not having some bitter days in your life. If there anybody knows, had it not been for the word of God, I would have lost my mind. Had it not been for the word of God, I wouldn't even be breathing. Had it not been for the word of God, I won't be standing behind this pulpit with a suit on and a microphone in my hand, preaching to people online right now. Had it not been for the God who is on my side, oh, beloved, I thank God right now because God is with you. And when God is with you, you ain't got to worry about your enemies. Why? Because God has a strategy. And if you just follow his biblical strategy, we can take over the city. We can encourage souls who are dying in their souls. 
dying on the inside because you have money issues. You have mental issues. Do I have a witness out there? You had emotional issues. Many of you have lost loved ones, almost lost your mind 10 times over in the last two and a half years. But God has kept you because you had the word of the Lord. And when the word of the Lord came to you, it sustained you. And so we got to understand that God has already given us the land. For those of you who want to be a prospering Christian in the body of Christ, for those of you who really want to make a splash in your earthly existence before you get to eternity, you've got to understand, beloved, we need a strategy. There's never been a time where we've had more information, but less transformation. So information is not a problem. And information has never been a problem, but we have more information available now, but we're more biblically illiterate. Because we're seeing less transformations. And we're seeing less transformation because there have not been any salvation. If there's no salvation, people are not really giving biblical information. What are you saying? We've got to have a strategy because there's somebody that you know that God has indeed given you social influence with, that he's placed you around them for a reason. But would you be willing to open up your mouth and tell somebody about King Jesus who came into your life and blessed you at a time when you wanted to give it up, at a time when you thought you were going to lose it all. He came into your life to forgive you of sin. If the least thing you can do is if he died for you, can you live for him? I got to get ready to get out of here. There was another occasion where the Apostle Paul and his second missionary journey found himself situated in a Philippian jail because Paul didn't do anything to get there. All he did was cast out a demonic spirit inside of a girl and he cast out their spirit and he was locked up in jail with Silas. Well, the Bible says in Acts 16, verse number 25, but about midnight, Paul and Silas, come here, somebody. I don't know what time you're going to be watching this, but the Bible says, what about midnight? They were praying oh, and singing. They were praying and singing, and they realized that God allowed a supernatural event to occur where God removed the shackles. God removed the chains. I don't know who I'm speaking to who's been in bondage mentally, in bondage emotionally, in bondage spiritually. Can I tell you that God is getting ready to remove some strongholds off your life? And sometimes he has to place us in a position not to punish us because sometimes God uses your imprisonment for somebody else's improvement. So God wanted Paul to be in that place, in that position so that he could preach to the Philippian jailer, because the only way God could get Paul to save the Philippian jailer and get the gospel to him is that Paul had to go to jail. Only way Joseph could have got elevated if he was in jail with the chief cupbearer and the Chief Baker, sometimes it's not because you've done something wrong. God just uses your imprisonment for somebody else's improvement. But we're living in a day where we don't want to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ because we'd rather be in our comfort zone. But when God gives you the gospel, God wants to put you in a combat zone. And we're living in some combat zones every day with shootings. Every time you turn on your television, shootings over here, human trafficking, wars in Ukraine, People dying, uh, being shot and killed, innocent people in Buffalo and Uvalde, Texas, and there's just evil all around us. But the only thing that can change evil and eradicate some of the evil it is God changes the heart from evil to holy. Amen, somebody. Because God is the only one that can change hearts. And so God told Joshua that every, every place the soul of your foot treads is yours. It's yours. It is yours. But if you tell yourself you can't do it, then you have missed out on how God operates. Because if Israel is going to take over the land based on their own militaristic might, then they could claim that they defeated their enemies. They went to Jericho and won. But what God wants to do is give you a strategy so that you could be obedient and understand that we are in a 911 climate in 2022 where you got men, women, boys, and girls that's going to die 
away from Christ because nobody is teaching them the gospel. And it's just not the preacher's responsibility. We need every child of God who is a member of a congregation of churches of Christ understand that you are created for a purpose, to possess purpose, and to utilize your purpose for the glory of Almighty God through his word, his will, and his way. Jesus said it this way in Mark chapter 16 and verse number 15. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. When he says go, he's given us vocation. When he says the gospel, he's requiring us to use it for education. When he says to the entire world, he's given us a location. When he says uh, preach, he's requiring us to use proclamation. When he says to all creation, he's given us a destination. God intended for us to go where Jesus in the entire world, not just your local context. Oh, beloved, one thing the pandemic has taught us is that what God wanted to do was change your ministry from a local ministry to a national ministry and even a global ministry. But if you are not willing to distribute the word of God and change your mentality from not doing things that work in the 1960s and start doing things that will work into 2022, we're never going to change the message. We just have to change the method of how we distribute God's word. He said, go into all the world, not just your local context. And many of us wanted to stay within the four walls of the building and barricade the gospel within the four walls of a building, not knowing that it was never God's intent to barricade the gospel of Jesus Christ in the four walls of a building because Jesus said, go into all the world. He didn't say that all the world would come to you. Because 99.9% .9 of most of our ministries pre-pandemic took place inside of a building. Many of you were breaking your neck trying to look back to try to see if your visitor had come to church. And you were mad because they didn't come to Jesus. You were mad because every Sunday they didn't come to Jesus because you forgot that Jesus said you needed to go into the world to them. I'm preaching on tonight. So I just want to tell somebody. What the writer of Joshua says as an application, and I'm gone. Notice what he says in verse number six. In verse number six of Joshua chapter one, verse number seven, and verse number nine, here's what God told Joshua that's going to bless us today so that we can understand that we are in a 911 situation and God is counting on us to understand that we are in a time and a season. Of emergency. Your congregation may not make it if you don't understand that we're in a 911 distress season. And the dispatch is the Bible of Jesus Christ. He says in verse number six, verse number seven, verse number nine, he says, Be strong and courageous. Verse six. Verse number seven, he says, Be strong and very courageous. Again, redundantly, verse number nine, he says, Be strong and courageous. I need to tell you, I'm gone. That if you are going to understand the state of where Christianity is right now, we are in a state of emergency. Churches are shutting down. People are no longer interested in evangelism. People are dying away from Christ. And some people are going to end up in hell. Well, you say, well, how do you know that? Because if you are not faithful to Jesus Christ on earth, then you ought not expect to be with him in eternity because you did not want to be faithful to him on earth. Why would he place you in a place called heaven that you don't want to even be in? Because many people are going to unfortunately spend their eternity in this quarantine called hell that has punishment. Now, if you're anything like me and, you know, all of my uh, fathers in the in the gospel, men like Brother I.B. White, men like Brother Hosey Bird Jr. back in Carolina, men like Brother James Kennedy, men like 
the people that I heard growing up as a child, hearing that death, burial, and resurrection. It's been in my bones for a long time. Well, all of my mentors, except for one of them, is still here with me. So I know this is a season for the Joshua's. I'm calling all Joshua's, all members of the Lord's Church, Churches of Christ, that it's an emergency season. It's 911. Bible teaches and tells us God already has given it to you. We just have to be strong and courageous and we have to meditate, which is open up your mouth and speak the word of the Lord. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? In thy name cast out devils. In thy name done many wonderful works that are professed unto them. I never knew you. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. See, when I start muttering verses like that and uttering and meditating verses like that, I'm mindful of Jesus' instructions to us. I'm mindful of what's going to happen in the end time. This is a prophetic word that we need to make sure we understand that Jesus is coming. And let's have fun. Let's do all we can. Let's vacation. Let's enjoy the wife. Let's enjoy the husband. Let's enjoy the kids. Let's enjoy the family. Let's enjoy mama. Let's enjoy daddy. But if we get everything that we want in those things, then miss heaven. The Bible says, what shall it profit a man if he gained the whole world and lose his soul? My soul, my soul burns with the gospel. I want to tell it to everybody. Be strong. Be courageous. It's getting ready to be a revival. That's getting ready to be a resurrection of churches. You're getting ready to see a lot of church growth, a lot of baptisms, because I'm getting ready to tell everybody I'm going into the whole world. And I'm taking the New Birth Church of Christ with me. And I got about 300 members with me. They're going to stand beside me and we're going to take it to Louisville. We're going to take it to across this nation. And anybody in other, other countries want to hear it, we're going to tell men, women, boys and girls the truth that's going to save their souls. And we're going to shout about it. We're going to rejoice. It's not going to be easy. Hadn't been easy. But we're going to be strong and courageous. Child of God is 911. It's an emergency. God has given it to you. What are you going to do with what God has given you? It's yours. It's yours. All you have to do is have a strategy to know God is getting ready to give it to you. I hope and pray this word has blessed your life. If I can do anything to help you, uh, let us know. Here at the Newburgh Church of Christ, we love you on behalf of our church, our leadership, our membership. We love you with the love of the Lord. Just remember, God loves you more. Go with Jesus. God bless you. Mm-hmm. Oh, Lord. Thum, thum, thum. Bless me. Lord keeps blessing me and no though I don't I don't deserve his faith I don't deserve his faithfulness still still he keeps on blessing me and I have to admit that sometimes It brings tears to my eyes When I think about his mercy You see, he knows in my heart I want to do right But it seems like Temptation is always around In front of me And calling me And I I admit sometimes I fall But when I get back up, he keeps on forgiving me. And what I love the most about him is that through it all, he still loves me, loves me, loves me, loves me, loves me. He keeps on love. Even with all my faults, he keeps on loving me.
Greetings from the Jackson Boulevard, Monroe Street Church of Christ in Chicago, Illinois. I am Minister Servant Robert L. Turner. I am so delighted that Dr. David C. Penn has chosen me once again to uh, conduct a presentation at the 14th Windy City Lectureship here in Chicago under the thematic theme on the other side of Jordan, taking a stand and capturing new land in a post-pandemic presence. Joshua uh, is my uh, subject today, taken from chapter three, and I'd like to read a few verses for context for uh, my topic today. Joshua 3:14 through 17 and it came to pass when the people removed from their tents to pass over Jordan and the priests burned the ark of the covenant before the people and as they bare the ark were come unto Jordan and the feet of the priests that bare the ark were dipped in the brim of the water for Jordan overfloweth all his banks all the time of harvest that the waters which came down from above stood and rose up and heaped very far from the city Adam that is beside Zaratan and those that came down toward the sea of the plain, even the salt sea fell and were cut off and the people passed over right against Jericho. And the priests that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the midst of Jordan. And all the Israelites passed over on dry ground until all the people were passed clean over Jordan. I like to introduce my topic, 
faith to enter the promised land. After the death of Moses, God placed his hand upon Joshua and called him to lead the people across the Jordan River into the land that he had promised to give them. Joshua, God's faithful minister, he was also Moses' minister. The word minister here uh, has the idea of servant. He was content to play second fiddle to Moses. Most people are too big for God to use. Most people are too full of themselves uh, for God to use. They have their own way of doing things. He was a long time that he is Joshua in training, 40 years in Egyptian bondage. He was one of the 12 spies. He endured the wilderness. He also led the defeat of the Amalekites. After 80 years of faithful behind the scene service, God said, Moses, my servant is dead. This time of training for Joshua was essential. I like to uh, ask us to remember this. We must serve before we can reign. We must descend before we can ascend. Oftentimes, God's will is never revealed through big things. Uh, if we will be faithful in the smallest task, God will be glorified in the greatest task. For the Bible says in 1 Peter 5 and 8, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, and he will exalt you in due time. Now, Joshua is the book of victory for me, and it is the Old Testament book also that describes the New Testament victory that we have in our Lord Jesus Christ. For Joshua is a picture of Joshua is a type. Joshua is an illustration of the Lord Jesus Christ. As a matter of uh, to consider, the name in the Old Testament, Joshua, in the is the Hebrew name of our New Testament name, Jesus. Consider that Jesus then is our heavenly Joshua who leads us into the land of promise, the land of fulfillment, and also the land of victory. The children of Israel have arrived at the Jordan. Behind them is Egypt and the 40 years of wilderness. Before them, the promised land waiting to be Possess. On the other side of Jordan, taking a stand and capturing new land in a post-pandemic presence, Joshua and the children of Israel camp by the Jordan. Israel faces up to their own utter helplessness to accomplish what is set before them. God told the people of Israel to wait three days at the Jordan shore. All that time, the people of Israel saw rushing water in the Jordan River, a swollen river with spring rains laying in front of them. They must have asked themselves, perhaps, how can we cross this Jordan River, but it's by faith that we are going to enter the promised land, and it is also by faith that Israel will be able to cross Jordan to enter the promised land. It was one thing for the 12 spies to make their way across uh, uh, the land of Canaan, but it's altogether different when there is a multitude of people waiting to cross the Jordan River with all of their possessions, with all of their substance, after 40 years 
in the wilderness. How can they cross Jordan? It will be by faith, my brothers and sisters, that they enter the promised land. And it will be by faith for us today who serve the Lord that we will enter the promised land that God has prepared for us. How will they make it at a moment like this? All the wonderful talk about living in the promised land is one thing, but going in to possess the promised land is altogether different. There is a seemingly impossible obstacle blocking their way. How will God get this done? The ark of God will lead the way. Joshua sent the priest who carried the ark of the covenant to lead the way, which was the visible representation of God's presence with the people. Joshua knew this was a spiritual problem, not a human problem. It wasn't a problem about how some engineers could make a way across that rushing mighty Jordan River that overflowed. No, this would be something only a God can handle. Uh, Israel would accomplish this impossible task as they set their eyes upon God's presence because this would be a spiritual victory by faith for them to enter the promised land. Joshua then requires that the people have a spiritual preparation when you read the story. Joshua's step of faith. He needs his faith to be seen by all so that they too can have faith. So Joshua's step of faith begins when he sends the priests to walk across a swollen Jordan River. Then Joshua spake to the priest saying, take up the Ark of the Covenant and cross over before the people. So they took up the Ark of the Covenant and went before the people, even with God's specific guidance and with specific guidance from God's word. This is still a very impressive step of faith for Joshua, the priest and the people. Living and walking in the promised land comes from this kind of faith. There will be some swollen rivers we are going to face in life. And it's going to take faith and the presence of God in our lives for us to enter the promised land. I want you to know this. Uh, living and walking in the promised land comes from this kind of faith and a relationship with God. Faith leads us into greater victories than the law ever could. Faith to enter the promised land. And the Lord said to Joshua, This day I will begin to exalt you in the sight of all Israel that they may know that as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. As Joshua takes a step of faith, God encourages him, and God will make Joshua a leader like Moses in the eyes of the people, and he will do it by using Joshua to miraculously lead the people across an impossible body of flowing, rushing water. After Joshua had uh, obeyed uh, God's guidance based on faith and his understanding of who God is and his word, now God gives Joshua a specific instruction. He says, when you come to the edge of the water, you shall stand in the Jordan. 
Joshua also encourages and instructs the priests and Israel. Joshua knows that the ark will lead the way. This is a spiritual battle to be won. The impossible problems in their way are not seen as an oppressive trial, but it is seen as a glorious opportunity for all of Israel to see God work. The people and the priests came and they walked right into a river that looked like it would swallow them up. Faith to enter the promised land. And as soon as they obeyed God and the priests stepped their feet in the Jordan River that was rushing with water, the water stopped. Oh, God truly is a great God. Because of the spring rains at this time of the early harvest, the river was swollen and overflowing its banks. The Jordan had stopped then, and the people crossed over on dry ground. The waters, which came down from upstream, stood still. Is it bringing back any type of memory as we talk about the Jordan being stopped and standing still and the water standing still. In some miraculous manner, God stopped the flow of the Jordan River. God miraculously dried the riverbed. This miracle obviously connects with the miracle that the nation knew uh, some 40 years earlier. The passing of God's people through the Red Sea. God brought them out of Egypt bondage with a miracle. God, he brought them into the promised land with a miracle. Just as God parted the Red Sea to let his people out of Egypt, God parts the Jordan River to let his people into the promised land flowing with milk and honey, a promise made God made long ago and a promise kept by God. How did it happen? What was the key to this amazing miracle? To me, it was the presence of God represented by the ark of the covenant. And when we let God lead the way, when we let God's presence prevail in our lives, God can do some miraculous things with his people. Again, the ark, when you read chapter three, in those 17 verses, the ark of the covenant uh, is mentioned, I believe, about 14 times. That tells me that the ark is the central uh, uh, presence, is the central cause for the people seeing this miracle and entering into the promised land. The Ark of the Covenant cleared the way for Israel uh, to face an impossible challenge in their lives and in our lives. We must look to God. We must look to Jesus, our Joshua. Jesus has cleared the way to victory over all things. It takes faith. In God, faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to enter the promised land. The certainties of their future, the certainties of our future, listen, they had not been this way before, most of them, because uh, most died that were uh in the wilderness after 40 years, but most of these young people had not been this way before. Previously, God had said to Joshua, as I was with Moses, so shall I be with you. 
Isn't that wonderful news? God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Just as he was with Joshua, he has promised to be with us for Jesus. The New Testament, Joshua says, he says, I will never leave nor forsake you. Lo, always remember this. I am with you always, even until the end of the age. So regardless, they had perhaps an uncertain future of a thinking of an uncertain future like we do as well. God had delivered. God had guided. God had supplied all their needs the 40 years as they wandered in the wilderness. The past has taught Israel and should teach us a lot uh, uh about ourselves and our relationship with God. It teaches us about our weaknesses. They saw without God, it's hard to enter the promised land. And I want you to know it without God and the presence in our, our lives and the relationship with God, it's going to be hard for us to make it to heaven. We're going to need God, his presence, and we're going to need our faith to enter the promised land. It's good to know your weaknesses. It's good to know that you need God. It's good to know that you can't make it to heaven by yourself. It's not by works that you'll make it in. It's by faith in Jesus Christ. It's through faith that we know him for it is impossible to please God without faith. And you can't know God without faith. Uh, with God watching out for us, with God knowing us and we knowing God, we know some things that uh, should be avoided. We know the stumbling blocks that's placed in our way. We can turn then the stumbling blocks into stepping stone. But when they got in the Jordan and they crossed over, God required them to place 12 stones. And when he said, when the children asked, what mean ye by these stones? You can tell them that God made a way out of no way. God provided a way for them to cross into the promised land by faith in God and the presence of God. You can tell them, uh, these children, when they asked you, how did you make it over? It was God that brought us over the troubled waters. Faith in a the promised land. Oh, God was there in their hour of need. God is here for us also in our times of need. Uh, the certainty of the present. God gave them a new leader for Moses was in the past. God gave them a new leader. The Old Testament is the Old Testament. God has given us a new leader, a new Joshua, Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. Uh, now, the pillow and the cloud was representative of God being with him all that time in the wilderness. God never fors forsook them. He led them by day and he led them by night. It was God and the pillar and the cloud and his presence with them. Now, the cloud is taken away. The pillow is no more. What will be that God? Will it be the cloud? It, the cloud is gone. It will be their faith in God. Not that his presence ever left them, but it will be not a visible cloud, but an invisible faith that they will enter the promised land. And we, even though we can't see God, it will be by faith 
that we are saved. And so, the certainty of our future is assured in Jesus Christ, the New Testament, Joshua. Like Israel, we too are moving into it. They were moving into their promised land. The past is the past. You and I cannot change it. The present is passing, even now. And we cannot stop it. How am I then to face the future with God? That's how. Uh, the song says, uh, I know who holds the future. And it is Jesus Christ. Jesus is an excellent example of being God's faithful servant. Jesus is our new Joshua. Jesus, the son of God. Jesus spent 30 years in obscurity. Jesus, God's son, worked in a carpenter's shop. Jesus when it was time to begin his ministry, stepped forth and was baptized by John the Baptist in, guess what, the Jordan River. And there came a voice from heaven declaring, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And you know, in the scholarly arena, it was uh, 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 considered to be uh, really truthful that the same day, the same month that God brought them out of Egypt was the same day and the same month that they crossed the Jordan River into the promised land. Oh, Jesus, God's greatest minister and faithful servant. Joshua knew there were perils ahead of them. A man who is called to serve should always remember that God will supply all that he needs to complete the mission God has given him. The supreme question for uh, us in fulfilling any office or, or any service in God's kingdom, should we should consider this not so much are you qualified, but rather are you called? And then what is your motive? Are you seeking a place of power and prominence? As a faithful servant of God, God desires men uh, broken in human spirit and filled with the Holy Spirit whose only desire is to serve in order to glorify God. Humble, Holy Spirit-filled men of God who are assured of their call like Joshua. Understand this. When the river of Jordan of life overflows and it's in our flood season, men and women who are whole, humble and Holy Spirit filled with God and his presence and that relationship they are, and they know, they are sure that God is able to help them cross by faith into the promised land. When the floods come and we're filled with God's presence, high walls and high cities are no match. God will bring down the walls in our lives. The giants that seem insurmountable with God's presence leading the way. They are no obstacles for an all-powerful God. God will drive them out before us. Christ was certain of his call. He says this, I came not to do my own will, but I delight myself in doing the will of God. He says, my meat is to do the will of him who sent me. No leader is more effective than when he is alone with God. And Joshua, in order to lead the people 
over into the promised land, had some alone time with God. It has been mentioned by some, one, more is accomplished behind closed doors than out in the open. And I tell you this, uh, when you face your uh, Jordan River that's overflowing, that's, it seems like you can't cross whatever it is that's in front of you, you remember that God is able and his presence in your life will help you to cross over into the promised land, but it's going to be by faith. According to 1 John 5 and 4, as I close, it says, for whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Again, faith to enter the promised land. May God richly bless you in all that you do in serving an all-powerful God. Thank you, Jesus, for Joshua being an example of victory. God bless. Somebody prayed for me. Oh, somebody prayed for me. I don't know who. I don't know who. I don't even know when it was. Oh, but thank God that they did. For I was on my way. On my way. To a devil's hell. But look at me now. I'm doing well. Cause now I'm on my way. To a better place. Cause somebody. Pray for me, Lord, somebody pray for me. Let me tell you, somebody pray for me. They must have had me on their mind. When I was living in sin, far from God, I thought I was doing fine. Then my days got dark and full of pain. See, Satan's winds started creeping in, but he lost control of my soul. Cause somebody prayed for me. Yes, somebody prayed for me. Glory, hallelujah. Somebody prayed for me. Somebody, somebody 
Somebody pray for me. Ooh, Lord. Somebody pray for me. I don't know which saint it was. And I can't tell you when. I'm just so glad. I'm so glad they did. See, I was on my way. I was headed for certain destruction. Oh, but look at me now. I'm going in a new direction. Hey, hey, I'm on my way to a better place now. Cause somebody, somebody prayed for me. Oh, somebody prayed for me. And I know, and I know, and I know that somebody prayed for me. It could have been my darling mother. Yeah. It could have been my loving father. Oh, it could have been. It could have been somebody who's been through something. And they know that they know that they know that they know what prayer can do. Yes, they know that prayer, prayer can travel across an ocean. Oh, yes, it can. And they know that a prayer, a prayer can travel faster than a bullet can. Hey, they know that prayer, 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 prayer is the only way that we can talk to the Lord. And they know that the prayers of the righteous avail it much. And that's why I'm glad. Somebody pray Somebody pray for me For me Good evening. My name is Willie Rupert Jr., minister for the Central Church of Christ in Baltimore, Maryland. I want to thank Dr. Penn and the ministers of the Chicagoland area for the opportunity to speak once again on the 2022 Windy City Lectureship, focusing on the theme on this side of Jordan. Yes, conquering this pandemic of great challenges. Well, like the children of Israel on their way to the promised land, they were located on the east side of Jordan. And of course, God's commandment was to cross over Jordan. Surely some great challenges awaited them. Giants awaited. But great territory, greater faith, greater victories. We too, the church, are faced with some great challenges. This pandemic has brought challenges to us. Will we remain on the other side, or will we cross over? Well, here's the message for today on this side of Jordan. Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 through 8. The word of God. Now it came to pass, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, that the Lord speak unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister or assistant, saying, Moses, my servant is dead. Now therefore arise and go over this joint, you and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon. To you have I given it, as I spake unto Moses from the wilderness, and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea, that is the Mediterranean Sea, towards the going down of the sun, shall be your border. There shall not any man be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you, nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage. For you shall cause this people 
to inherit the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous to observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that you may have good success wheresoever you go. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate thereon day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make your way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. I want to encourage you today as we are faced with old and new challenges. COVID-19, record murders, wars, nationalism of white supremacy, famine, shortage of baby formula, court battles over abortion, gender identity, mass voting rights, even the replacement theory. It can all be viewed as new territory to be conquered or complacency of satisfaction. This was the view, the great challenge that laid before the children of Israel as they were on one side of Jordan and the Jordan River Divided the land to a new territory, the promised land. We today are faced with some new territories, new opportunities, or is it just complacency? Satisfied being on this side of Jordan. If you would lend me your heart and ears to this thought. From this side to that side of Jordan. From this side to that side of Jordan. After the death of Moses, God's servant, God selected and instructed Joshua to lead the people across the Jordan River to conquer a whole new territory that is to their prophetic possession, which had been promised to their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Although Jordan is a literal river, which connects the Sea of Galilee to the Dead Sea some 136 miles. Yet, listen carefully, it is often spoken metaphorically, referred to the freedom from opposition, oppression, and hope by the slaves. The promised possession of the children of Israel and finally, the spiritual entrance into the new kingdom or the promised land. When you read and think about the Jordan River, Jordan River, it is again, it was the hope of the slave. Crossing Jordan. It was the prophetic promise to the children of Israel. 
as well as its way, the gateway, the pivotal point into the promised land. They had to go through Jordan, passing through the river. Listen, just as, just as the generation of Moses escaped the oppression of the Egyptian by crossing the Red Sea in order to become free people, so it is symbolized in the slave song, Roll, Jordan, Roll. I forgot you all don't know nothing about that, do you? You remember the old slave song? Listen, it was written by a, a, a Methodist minister by the name of Charles Wesley who wrote Roll, Jordan, roll. But it was adopted by the slave in their struggle for freedom. Listen to the words. Oh, my soul, arise in heaven, Lord. For to your deed when Jordan roll. In other words, the souls of the slaves symbolized their oppression of freedom once they crossed the Jordan. And just as the children of Israel were destined for the promised land after they crossed the Jordan River, so we see in the song, Roll, Jordan, Roll, the slaves sang, Little children. Learn to feel the law. Let your days be long, which call for the slave to be faithful to the law once they cross Jordan. Just as you are going to continue reading for the children of Israel to be faithful to the law once they entered the promised land. Listen to me. Do you call, recall the song, Roll, Jordan, Roll? I remember dad and mama singing it. Roll, Jordan, roll. Roll, Jordan, roll. Roll, Jordan, roll. You don't know nothing about that. You got to go way back deep. So it is with all these social challenges, physical challenges, Political challenges, spiritual challenges, crossing over Jordan allows for new territory to be conquered. See, we are faced with some old and new territory, some new challenges. What are they? COVID-19? What are they? Some of the old, we're still fighting for freedom. What are they? Some financial challenges, whether voting rights, you still got to cross from over here to over there. So it is with the children of Israel. You see, to stay on the other side and not cross over Georgia, you may miss some of the greatest blessing that God has for us, that he has for you. Listen. Jeremiah 29, 11 through 13 says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. God said, I know what I have for you in store. But you got to cross from over there to over here. Listen to what Jesus said. John 14, 12 to 14. Verily, verily, I say to you, he that believe in me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go back to my Father. I must go so he can come. Do you hear the Lord? I must go. 
so he can come. You going to do greater works than I have ever. Not in raising the dead, giving sight to the blind, but the volume of work. But guess what? You and I have to cross Jordan from this side to that side. We have to go through the great channel. And although anyway, when you start going from one side to the other side, there's always fear. Say amen if you can. What fear awaited the children of Israel, giants? What fear? Wall cities? What fear? Challenges a nation much greater than they were. What challenges await us? But it doesn't matter. Why? Because God said unto Joshua, Fear not, I'll be with you. I'm with you. Listen, you shall observe all that I've commanded. Just as I commanded Moses, I'm going to be with you. I won't fail you. I won't forsake you. You just follow what's written in the book. And you will have good success. Well, number two, Jordan River was the gateway to Israel's prophetic possession. Let me say it again. You see, the land, the promised land, the land that had been promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, it was promised to them. It was theirs for the taking. But who was in the land were the giants. Now listen to God. Encourage Joshua. Verses 2 through 8, he says, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, rise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, and you lead them through the land. Listen to God's positive statement. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you. As I said unto Moses, from the wilderness all the way down, I've given you the land. Listen to him. There shall not any man be able to stand before you. All the days of your life, as I was with Moses, I'll be with you. I will not fail you nor forsake you. Be strong of good courage. For unto this people have I divided for an inheritance this land which I swear to give to their father. I've given it to you. I want you to think with me. If God be for us, then who can be against us? There's some new territory. There's some new challenges. I know a weight on the other side. But nevertheless... There are greater giants to be slain. Say amen if you can. There's not only greater giant, but there's also greater fruits to be attained. Because greater works the Lord said you and I would do, but we cannot allow COVID. You can't allow nothing to stand between you and God in doing the work God wants you to do. Here it is in the word of God. Israel was faced either this side or across Jordan to the other side. The river divided them. It divided them from all of their blessing, their promises, if they wanted. But you had to cross over. Yes, just as the promised land was new territory. To be conquered. It required courage. Consistency. For conquest. Because of the giants. But the reward. Can you imagine it? Bigger fruit. (laughs) Larger fruit. Deeper faith. To grow with God. Has not God said the same to you and I? 
2 Timothy 1, 6 through 11. Listen to Paul say to Timothy, Wherefore I put you in remembrance that you stir up the gift of God which is in you by the putting on of my hand. For God has not given us the spirit of fear but of power, love, and a sound mind. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, nor as a prisoner, but be a partaker. Be a partaker of the affliction of the gospel according to the power of God. What does God want you and I to do? Cross over. Listen. What they needed was courage. What they needed was love. 1 John 4, 16, the Bible says, And we have known and believed the love that God has to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God. And God in him. Herein is love made perfect. That we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in the world. Judgment is not talking about the judgment in the latter day. But when while we are under pressure living in this world, we'll have some boldness to cross over. Even as it was then, so is it today. With this pandemic, new territory, which we haven't seen before, face masks, hand washing, distance and seating, all this simply means bigger giants to be slain, greater faith to be gained, and a greater harvest for testimony that God brought us through. As God said to Joshua, only be strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do all that's written in the law which my servant Moses commanded you. This book shall not pass out of your mouth. Neither to the right nor to the left, but you shall meditate day in and day out. We have to spend time studying the word. Finally, finally, I want to bring it to Jordan River was the pivotal point into the promised land from this side. To that side. Listen to Joshua chapter 4. Verses 19 through 24. Spiritually. And the people came up out of Jordan. On the tenth day of the first month. And encamped in Gilgal. In the east border of Jericho. And those twelve stones. Which. They took out of Jordan, did Joshua pitch in Gilgal. And he spake to the children of Israel, saying, When your children shall ask their father in time to come, What mean is these stones? Then you shall let your children know, saying, Israel came over this Jordan on dry ground. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of Jordan from before you until you pass over as the Lord your God did to the Red Sea when he dried it up before on dry ground and the children of Israel walked on dry ground. Did you get the spiritual picture? What it is, they were on this side. But in order to cross over on the other side, 
They had to go through the Jordan River. Jordan River was a picture of baptism. You see Moses, 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Moreover, brethren, I won't have you ignorant. As they were all baptized in the Jordan River, excuse me, the Red Sea. And they were baptized unto Moses. Well, if the church in the wilderness was baptized, y'all not with me, unto Moses, then here come another generation. For God had destroyed them all and raised up their children. Now they too needed to be baptized. Am I right? Well, if the church in the wilderness had to be baptized, what about you and I today in order to get to the promised land that's called heaven? You and I got to pass through Jordan. You and I must be baptized to have our sins washed away. Jesus said, go into the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized shall be saved. It's a picture of the gospel that if you're going to go to the other side, if you're going to cross on the other side, all of your sins, are you following me, have to pass through the Jordan River to have your sins washed away. That's what they, you and I, have to do the same thing. Well, let me close one more about Jordan River. How many of you remember the old song? I got one more river to cross. Because one more river is death itself. There's a river that you and I must cross. What is the river? Well, metaphorically speaking, Jordan. You and I must die. There's no way around it. We all must die. And we're going to come to the river. And what are you going to do? So the old song is, I got one more river to cross. Father can't cross it for me. Mother can't cross it for me. Sister nor brother can cross it for me. I got a cross river by myself. But Jesus will be there to cross with me. What are you saying, preacher? Paul said, let me show you a mystery. See, we must all change. For flesh and blood can't go to heaven. For your corruption must put on incorruption. Your mortal got to put on immortality. And when we finally get to that river, the cross, he'll help us to cross. See, if you're here today, if you're living in the past on this side, think with me. You see, the cross over, he wants you to leave all of you behind. Because you and I were once in Egypt. See, to leave Egypt, you got to cross the river. And if you cross the river, you step into the promised land. Think with me. That's your physical man. That's your mental man. Because if you're going to cross from one side to the other, there's always fear. Do you know what's awaiting tomorrow? Anybody in here afraid of what's coming tomorrow? Do you think the war that's in Ukraine may make its way to the United States? What about the shortage of food may come? 
But why worry when he says, I'm in control? Because you got to go from that side to this side. And in order to cross over, you got to come through the river. But on the other side are some giants. But as God said to Joshua, don't fear. See, I'm with you. If there's nothing else you learn, if God be for us, who can? Who can be against you? How many folk in here know that God can make your enemies your friend? How many of you know that God, not you so much of you doing everything to protect you, but God sends his angel to watch over you? Why are you going to send your children to college? And you will pray, but God is the one who's watching out for you. While you go to work, who you think is watching out for you? He says, cross over. Step in the water. When you step in the water, God said, watch me as I split it wide open. And I'll let you walk on dry ground. Anybody willing to do it in here today? See, it takes love to conquer fear. Amen. Amen. The real issue is how much do you love the Lord? Amen. You can say all day long, you know, he is in my heart. Yeah, I want to see you step. Yes. Yes. Step out in the water. And if you step, he'll make two steps. Yes. Will you come to the Lord? The picture's been painted from that side to this side yes. is crossing Jordan. Yes. Will you come to him? It's here in the gospel. It's believing the word of God, how Jesus died for your sins and mine. To repent of your sin, then confess that he is Savior of the world who wants to be your Lord and you're willing to make him that Amen. by walking by faith. Yes. Will you come to him? And then be baptized to have your sins washed away. And every day, walk by faith and not by sight. Tell the truth, shame the devil. I know fear rests in our hearts. But he said, come to me. Will you come? We're going to stand and see. Will you come to Jesus today? Right now, will you come?
now and your family, family has let you down. Let you down. Even your closest friends can't be found. Nobody can find. Remember, God in heaven is looking down. Fly. Even though sometimes he seems slow, take his hand and don't you ever let go, don't let go, don't let go. Have you ever thought of everything that God has done for you, my love? And when your health is failing you, Lord, and you just don't think, you don't think you'll make it through, your room is filled with friends who cry, but close your eyes, go on and die. You're still blessed, though you'll be missed by friends. But if they hold out, they'll see you once again. Have you ever thought every little old thing that God has done for you, 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 you? I know He gave you ears. God gave you eyes to see. He gave you two legs to walk. And you got a mouth. So I'm wondering, do you know? Do you really know? Do you realize? Hey, do you really know? Do you know? Do you know? Have you ever thought about all of the times he brought you out. Did you ever stop to say, thank you Lord for one more day? Do you ever take the time to thank the Lord for letting you rise? Have you ever wondered why you're still living when others die? Do you know, do you know, do you know? Listen, listen, listen. Listen. You just ought to think about it sometimes. I mean, some of you are younger than I am, some of you are older than I am, but we all need to come to no matter where we are in life because you may be as old as you're going to get. Amen. I've grown to learn. I've grown to learn that when I lay down to sleep at night, God is by my side. And when I rise up in the morning, I know that it's God that gets me going. All through the day, God helps me keep the faith. Late in the evening, it's God that's watching me. When times get a hard, I count my blessings and name them one by one. Sometimes I'm down on my knees, counting my blessings to see what the Lord has done for me, for me, for me, for me. Mm-hmm. Sometimes when we used to ride all night long. Oh, Lord, just make it in time to sing or do what we had to do. Back would be hurting, sitting up, sleep on the vans. But I met a man by the name of Johnny Wilder who, if he sits up, somebody has to sit him up. He has legs, but he cannot walk. 
He has arms that can't move, but still he says, I confess. I feel somewhat guilty in my happiness. There's a public spirit in me. Then he says, some wonder how can he smile. He realizes that he's blessed. <laughs> I got a good friend over in Sheffield, Alabama. He has two eyes, but he cannot see. Hey, man, his name is Charles Burns. And that's my buddy, y'all. I don't think Charles started studying the Bible till he could not see. But I bet you he could outquote most of us in Scripture. And he'll tell you that the Lord is good. He said, God had to take my eyes in order for me to see. We're blessed. We're blessed. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you ought to get on your knees and tell the Lord. Sometimes you ought to instead of saying please say thank you, Lord. Sometimes you ought to <laughs> just give him the highest praise. You don't know, do you really know? I will live